wait is so long, you just have to kind of risk your life. Every time! My mom got a job offer in New York and she was like, I don't know if I want to go. And I was living, yeah, I was just living with her at the time. And so I was like, uh, we're going. Because I mean, when would I ever have the chance to live in New York for free? I was living with my mom in the Upper East Side and I was just making music in my room and, and I, had, I didn't know anybody here. I was just like working at restaurants and I knew that I needed to kind of get into, I needed to meet other people that were making music, other people that were creating shit. And so when Doug, my manager now, DM'd me and was like, come to Kid Super. I was like, what's Kid Super? And I came by and we, they were filming some video and I just got along so well with these five guys. And I was like, wow, I found my people. I posted on Instagram that I needed an, I was looking for a room and I could only pay like 600. And uh, the column was like, come to Kid Super. And then a week later I was moving in and they were like, oh my God, a girl is moving in. What are we gonna do? We've never lived with a girl. And from there we kind of were just like, I guess partying and just fucking around. And then I realized I wasn't really taking advantage of what the space they were giving me. And so I started working with Stelios who produced my album and we made Hi Hi's to Lolo's the song in the basement. I know you can't make it alone and I, I wanted to do everything on my, by myself because I have such a strong vision, but then I met these guys that were there to help my vision come to life and I just, <laughs> the train, this happens a lot. I could just yell. the video for High Eyes to Low Lows around here and, and I just on VHS and I edited it. I filmed it myself, well with my friends, I can't film it myself. I edited it at Kid Super on their computer because I didn't have a laptop at the time. And I just was doing it like, and I put it out and we, the thing about them is like they just kind of do it. Like a lot of people talk about what they want to do and some things may sound crazy but call them and everybody just, they just do it. And I was just relying on the idea that maybe one day I'd sign to a label and, and then I realized I didn't need to do that to, to be credible. So I just put it out on TuneCore, which was free, or $10. And then it went viral on Spotify and I was like, all right, you know, I made, it was like at a million streams. And I was in LA and I had negative $7 in my bank account because I was, I was in LA just like recording and I wasn't working at, at the time. And so I was like, how can I have a million streams and negative seven dollars? How is this real? I just realized that my music was connecting and I only had maybe five songs out at the time. And so I was like, wow, I need to keep, I need to keep going. I need to keep making music. And so I moved out of here and this year I, I got my own place, which is for me one of my biggest milestones. Because it means like my my music is really my career now. Yeah. Being filmed. What's up? Where are you going? Three. Three. Okay. Going up. Oh, you gotta catch the who who. Who autographed the wall? A lot. Are we gonna see it? Yeah, we'll see it. There you go. I come from a lot of different places. Like I was born in France. I grew up in the Bay Area in San Francisco, which is like cultural melting pot. Just a bunch of different people and and then my dad is from Algeria. And so it's like just by nature, I have an understanding of different cultures, and so I try to put that in my music, and I'm not really 
trying to appeal to just one thing or to anyone really. I just I'm just myself in my music. Thank you. What's up? Seeing all the variety, just seeing everybody at my shows has been amazing and I think that I have a very good relationship with my fans. Like I talk to them on Instagram, on Twitter. I even have a, f um, a group chat with my fan pages, <laughs> which is crazy to say that I even have fan pages, but it's pretty, it's pretty great. Like it's just, it's amazing to see what music can do. My fans are called Lowriders, and we have a group chat on, on Instagram where we just talk about things. And whenever I post like music snippets, they're like, oh my God. And it's like, I can just talk to them whenever. I see them more as friends, but at the same time, you have to kind of keep a, a distance. I kind of want to treat it more as a lead until the lead actually comes in. You know, after, I was starting to tour a lot. I realized I didn't have much time to make music and I'm like, oh my God, I need to make new music because this album, to me, I mean, I made it maybe a year and a half ago, but that's when I started it. So I feel like as a person and as a musician, I've evolved already. And um, so now coming into it, I don't take my studio time for granted as much. And I try to write and I try to prepare before I come into the studio because it's not, it's like crunch time now, I'm super busy. My schedule is always packed, which is stressful because I need my, I need my alone time and I need my time to chill and watch TV shows, but. And so now when I go into the studio, it's like, gotta finish this song. And, um, but I think I'll have a few months after tour to, to really get back down and, and think about what I wanna write about because my first album was about like being broke and being and hustling and now that things are it's not like that anymore you know my life has changed so much and so it's not about being broke and working at a restaurant anymore now it's about starting it's about seeing the potential and seeing like the change in my life and seeing success and then kind of still feeling the same way that I've always felt still being troubled and like just still being confused. We finished this song except for this one sentence <laughs> that we can never find. Oh no, wait. Oh no, the glamour is... Maybe that's better. You think that's the one? It could be. Oh no, the glamour... That might be it. Okay. Life is supposed to be fun, like nobody really knows what it is. But I feel like music is a fun, positive thing. So but it's so easy to get caught up in the, the darkness of it. But so I'm just trying to, trying to find that light again that I had when I moved here. Yeah, I never, I never feel like I'm good. <laughs> I mean, I do, I have, a, I have a standard for myself for like when I know something is finished, but I don't think I've reached my potential yet. And I don't think I've made the best music I've ever made yet. And if I did think that, then I would never get better. So I think there's so much for me to learn and so much for me to do. Like, people are always like, oh, how does it feel? Like, congrats on all your success. And I'm like, what success? I've always had a fire in me. That kind of like young innocence and that drive, I feel like that's what's still in me. I think my mom is like my, my rock and I just want her to be good because she definitely, she raised me and my sister alone and she like worked so hard. And so I just wanna make sure she's good and I just wanna be comfortable. Stability is what everybody wants but I just want to make really good music too while I'm at it.